Cincinnati was in action this past Saturday at UConn. Cincinnati won the game 41-0. to uh, Up next for the Bearcats uh, will be this uh, Saturday. Cincinnati will be at Temple for a noon Eastern time start. The will be televised on ESPN News. Uh, Coach, thank you for joining us on the call today. If you would take a minute to tie up the uh, performance at UConn, uh, tell us what you expect to see, maybe, or maybe a word or two about Jeff Luke's performance, actually, as our defensive player of the week. Uh, and then what you expect to see as you uh, return to the road to face Temple this Saturday, please. Yeah, we're uh, uh, looking forward to uh, another conference game this week. We uh, uh, had a good game last week. wasn't our best game, but I thought we played a solid effort, uh, especially defensively. Jeff Luke uh, all over the field making plays, and that was his best game of the year. Tackled very well, caused a fumble, almost scored on the return. But he's become – you know, a solid leader for the team, not just as a football player, but a sideline guy. You know, when uh, when things are going good or going bad, he's always got an opinion about, you know, with the other players. And so he's been very uh, instrumental in us having a five-game winning streak. Uh, playing Temple this week, uh, another team that's had an open date before we played, so uh, we don't really know what to expect. But we're uh, excited about uh, playing. It's our last away game. Uh, I'm sure uh, – Coach there is they're excited. They're one game away from bowl eligibility, got two games left. We'll get their best effort, and we understand that. And so uh, we just continue to, you know, try to improve on what we're doing. Well, I think our coaches are doing a good job getting getting our guys mentally prepared for a game because we, we really hadn't had much of a letdown uh, in the last five or six weeks. So excited about another game, looking forward to going to Philadelphia, and hope we have a little bit better weather than what we've had the last couple of weeks. Any questions for Coach Tuberville, please? Star 1 on your telephone to join the queue. The operator will introduce you. We'll take our first question from Dan Tortora with Dan Tortora Broadcast Media. Hi, Coach. How are you doing today? Doing great. Just to look at this season and, and being at this point that you're at right now at Cincinnati, just what you've learned from this year's team and what you've really learned about yourself as a head coach, knowing that there's always that opportunity to learn as you grow. Well, you know, the big thing and, and the most exciting thing that, that's fulfilling for coaches is to see a football team get better, and we've definitely done that uh, all year long. We've uh, we struggled early in the season with some youth and some injuries. We've they, Our players uh, uh, wasn't having a lot of fun, but it's been great to see them with a smile on their face for the past month. We've actually become a pretty good football team. We've gotten better. We've used our strengths uh, to our advantage. Uh, I think we've improved our weaknesses, and as a coach, you just enjoy your players having a good time because it's this is a hard sport, hard practice, uh, very tough, very competitive, and uh, I just enjoy seeing you know guys have success and get up off the ground several times when they got knocked down and and make a positive out of it. So uh, hopefully we uh, continue to play well, and uh, you know that's uh, that's my job as a head coach to see us try to continue to improve. When you look at guys that, you know, get knocked on the ground and, and you said it's important for you, it means a lot to you to see them get back, get back up. Munchie, one of those guys that, that's had to do it numerous times. So what are some things that you've learned from him? Has, has he helped you improve as a head coach, and has his adversity really taught something to you and to the team itself? Well, I think everybody's learned something from Munchie's experience. Number one, uh, never count anybody out. Uh, I think a lot of the doctors and people that looked at him and, saw his injury and his surgery, uh, and even our players looked at a guy that uh, was down and out or given a down and out uh, uh, verdict uh, after the second game of last season. And uh, he showed everybody never quit, and uh, he came back and has really helped this football team mentally as well as physically, and he's given, given us some, some stability at a position where we had a young quarterback starting and uh, knowing that he could come in and, at any time and, and uh, do the job. So experience really pays off for you. I'm proud of Munchie. I'm proud of Jake Golick, who a guy that came to us two years ago, uh, back injury, wasn't going to ever play again, decided to give it another shot after some stem cell surgery, and then to come back and score a touchdown last week in, in a game uh, in his hometown. Uh, there are a lot, of, a lot of stories that happen in football because you have so many players. And, uh, again, that's a – advantage of being a coach to see a lot of those things go from the bad bad uh, decision to the good decisions and and good things happen so uh, excited for uh, uh, guys like Munchie and Jake Golick to do things that uh, people didn't give them an opportunity to do in in the future. 
Thank you, Coach. I appreciate it. Thank you. We'll take our next question from Dan Harrelson with football.com. Hey, Coach. How are you today? Good morning. Uh, speaking of success, uh, you obviously coached in the Iron Bowl, and it is Iron Bowl week. Uh, how special was that six-game winning streak that you put on Alabama, and did you have a favorite game out of the six? Oh, you know, they're all special. That's a that's a tough game for coaches. It's a real fun game for fans and uh, and especially the football teams, but there's a lot of pressure on coaching staffs on both sides because you know the, the implications of winning uh, – and the implications of losing that game. So it's uh, it was uh, an interesting rivalry while I was in it for 10 years. Uh, enjoyed, obviously, one win, much less six in a row. But it was uh, it was fulfilling in the fact that you, you were able to, when you won that game, that you knew that your fans were going to be ecstatic for 365 days. Your players could always remember that. You know, there was a lot of students that went to Auburn University when I was there that never lost. Uh, the whole time that they were in school there uh, against uh, their in-state rivals. So, you know, I I get emails all the time from just regular students saying, hey, coach, just because of what y'all did, we, you know, we we never never saw defeat, uh, you know, while we're in school there. So uh, it goes so far and so deep uh, personally to the people in that state and to the fans and to the alumni. Just, again, it puts a lot of pressure on coaches. And uh, do I miss it? Uh, Not really. Uh, but, uh, I'm, you know, I know what both coaching staffs are going through this week and a lot of implications on this game other than just a, uh, just a, another football or another Iron Bowl. But uh, just being an Iron Bowl is enough. Okay. Thank you, Coach. Do we have any other questions for Coach Tuberville, please? Star one on your telephone, if so. Coach, we will thank you for your time today. We look forward to talking to you again one more time next Monday.